NASA says this present time is the best opportunity to concentrate on the world Venus. This follows the new disclosure of possible life on the world. In the event that you somehow ended up taking a look at NASA's records from the 1960s, you'd see the Space Association calling Venus a planet of condemnation. All the while, Mars transformed into our foreordained target. Such mindful naming of the most profound planets isn't an event during the wild space race period. The Soviet Union was centered around sending costly missions to Venus. The horrendous planet showed basically no opportunities for life, yet the Soviet space program didn't decommission the Venera program until the fall of the realm. Due to Neil deGrasse Tyson, we finally realize why. Join us as we examine the declassified photos from Venus taken by the Soviet Union. The fall of the Soviet Union was dynamic in more ways than one. Notwithstanding the reality that it shifted the global direction of the world, the lack of the realm additionally sank various secrets with it. The fact that the Soviets had a significant prejudice for mysteries, from running the most outstanding knowledge office on the planet to being cryptic about their true capacity for extraterrestrial contact, implies the previous superpower holds different privileged secrets within itself. Believe it or not, before the United States of America overwhelmed most of planetary undertakings in space, the Soviet Union was leading the game. While the realm has a long history of effective and unprofitable space missions, its greatest fixation was on the shockingly hostile planet Venus. In the Russian language, you'd see Venus as Venera, and subsequently, the name of the mission that spanned from 1961 to 1983. During the same time, the United States was busy with sending its missions to the moon. So, in a savvy way, the Soviets decided to use their resources elsewhere. We can't say that the entire obsession with the second planet from our sun is odd. Did the Soviets expect to utilize the planet's surface as a reasonable and extraordinary armed force establishment? Or were they possibly hoping to colonize the planet right after searching for any kinds of life up there? It's exceptionally hard to say why the realm was focused on the repulsive planet, since the Soviets designated these examination excursions during the Cold War. They weren't definitively open about their places and targets. Believe it or not, all that we know about the Venusian missions is based on declassified and unarchived information. Even then, it's hard to pinpoint what the Soviets were looking for and if they revealed the secrets of Venus. The Soviets didn't land on Venus once or even twice, but three times. That is simply not true. The Soviets launched 28 costly rockets to the stunning planet. Furthermore, 13 of those entered the Venusian air, while eight landed. Such complex missions had placed the Soviets in a leading position in space exploration. Sure, the United States of America was a close second, but NASA was more interested in satellites and innovative technology than in examining life on planets. Its focus on Mars came subsequently, neither especially great nor especially terrible. Your history textbook may not tell you this, but the Soviet space program was the first organization to send a probe into the atmosphere of a planet other than Earth. It also had another set of firsts on its resume. The USSR became the first state to achieve a soft landing on another planet, bringing back pictures and sounds from the surface of another planet. That's right, the Soviets had their own one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind moment well before the U.S. So why do we rarely learn about such achievements? Remember what we said about the Soviet bias for keeping secrets. That is only one of many reasons for the oversight of the Soviet space program. Back in 1992, the well-known organization was decommissioned in the aftermath of the USSR, and the organization had to be restored with a new Russian identity, Roscosmos. A lot of its historical data was either lost or destroyed. This is exactly why we don't have a clear answer for why the Soviets launched 28 rockets into the Venusian climate. Anyway, if we had to make the most real estimate, perhaps the Soviet decision to explore Venus was about cost efficiency more than anything else. It is not necessarily the case that the space program wasn't confident about the planet's potential. They were looking for practical water presence, levels of solar radiation, and the general qualities of the planet. Without a series of these space missions, it would have been almost impossible to quantify Venus' high temperatures and thick atmosphere. Today, various cosmologists do not believe that the hostile planet could support life. The temperatures up there are high enough to melt lead, and water is scarce. Moreover, due to its thick atmosphere, the air pressure on Venus is many times that of Earth. 
However, these are very recent developments, and to disregard the USSR's contribution to the examination of Venus is akin to altering history. As far as the Soviets were concerned, Venus was worth researching, even if it was simply to stir up the space race. You see, examining more hospitable planets like Mars wasn't exactly off the table, but it was more costly than sending probes to Venus. Everything essentially comes down to the distance from Earth to another celestial body. On average, the dreadful planet is just 40 million kilometers away from our home, while Mars, on average, is 250 million kilometers away. Such massive differences in distance amount to extreme differences in cost. Also, if the United States of America wasn't the world's biggest economy, it would never have been easy to research Mars. Various reports suggest that Soviet missions were problematic and had significant technical gaps. Obviously, the spacecraft weren't equipped to cover infinite distances. Moreover, the organization had a poor history of losing contact with its rockets, so it makes sense why the Soviet space program was choosing a more limited and closer mission that would yield results. Anyway, if we don't consider the space race in this context, the story of the Venera missions would be incomplete. The United States wasn't even on the space map when the Soviet program launched the first artificial satellite, Sputnik 1, in 1957. This move intensified the space race and maintained its momentum. However, what's really interesting is the reason. Regardless, the U.S. focused on the moon. Beside obscure regions, NASA had a series of failures with its Venus missions during the 1960s. As a result, the U.S. space organization ended up in a gridlock called the Venus Curse. Each time they launched a probe into the Venusian atmosphere, it turned out badly. This is precisely when the Soviet Union saw an opportunity to capitalize on NASA's failures. At that time, both the U.S. and the USSR were determined to win the space race. The most effective strategy was to exploit two distinct opportunities. It was a quiet but definitive strategy. The Soviet space program seized Earth's sister planet as the most notable achievement in the space race, accomplishing something that its major competitor had failed to do. Despite the realm's limited resources and mismanaged government, it repeatedly sent missions to Venus to secure its triumphant position against the U.S., as opposed to NASA's focus on the moon. This strategic division wasn't without enmity and misleading propaganda. To obscure their significant failures with Venus, the American agency was prompted to criticize the USSR's fixation on the planet in the media. Venus was labeled as the horrible planet, while Mars became man's destiny. These labels didn't matter to the Soviets. Their mission was to demonstrate superiority over the Americans, and they were successful in doing so. The Venera missions are almost forgotten in present history. However, despite their outdated origins, those missions were significantly complex, advanced, and ambitious. In fact, if we want to pick an event that marked the beginning of the space age, the Venera missions would take the lead. Reflecting back to the 1950s, the Soviets began to experiment with the design and technical details of the probes. For the next 30 years, they continued to build and launch interplanetary spacecraft as part of the Venera program. Since the program was running alongside a highly tumultuous Cold War, the Soviets were focused on enhancing their assets. Luckily for them, the early years of the conflict provided them with more resources than the United States. That advantage turned out to be very useful, allowing them to build larger rockets designed to withstand high altitudes and long distances. The Soviets rushed to experiment with both manned and unmanned spacecraft while the Soviet scientific community was working on a series of calculations and estimates to create accurate trajectories for the Venus missions. Behind the scenes, their Mars programs were also running successfully. For the Soviet space program, nothing was more important than developing complex instrumentation for these probes. This led to the greatest breakthrough in the history of space exploration. In 1966, the Soviet agency launched Venera 3, making it the first artificial probe to enter the atmosphere of Venus and successfully impact the planet's surface. This crucial achievement intensified the competition between the two superpowers. Unlike the American missions, which were plagued with failures and gridlocks, the Soviet program continued to make progress. Despite the program's ongoing development, the USSR managed to send successful probes into the Venusian atmosphere. The most significant issue with this approach was limited design capacity. 
the Soviets quickly overcame their design problems and launched the most advanced rockets of the Venera program in the 1970s. Their pioneering capability allowed them to conduct the first simultaneous launches of Venera 4 and Venera 5. According to most historians, this was the most fascinating decade in the history of space exploration. Indeed, the U.S. attempted to develop similar launch plans. So why did the Soviet agency choose simultaneous launches into Venus? To understand this, you need to recognize that interplanetary travel requires advanced instrumentation to gather the highest level of data and evidence. Obviously, the spacecraft was initially launched to study the planet's surface. This is exactly what happened with Venera 4. Since the launch went smoothly and the spacecraft entered Venus atmosphere successfully, the Soviet program proceeded with Venera 5. It wasn't simply a repetition of the first launch. The second spacecraft was specially designed to gather unique data about the planet. Ultimately, the Soviets aimed to overcome obstacles of temperature, air pressure, and radiation on Venus. They didn't have to wait too long for their answers. By the mid-1970s, the Soviet program was entering the most advanced phase of the Venera missions. Everything the USSR had done up to that point was about research and development. It was about ensuring that their designs and advancements were improved. It was also about perfecting the techniques and mechanics of interplanetary travel. However, for the second decade of Venera missions, the Soviet Union aimed to conduct exploratory missions. The most notable and exciting launch of this period was Venera 7. As the 11th Soviet probe entered Venus' atmosphere, it became the first spacecraft to send data from another planet. The planet's high temperatures, density, and surface pressures were already noted. By this point, the Soviets were attempting to record Venusian sounds. The next major achievement for the program came in the mid-1980s. Venera 13 had outperformed all previous interplanetary missions in terms of complexity. This spacecraft was the first to capture color panoramic photos of Venus' surface. At the same time, the Soviet program launched Venera 14 to gather similar data about the planet's surface. As the Soviet Union was perhaps the earliest country to discover and recognize Venus, the Russian Space Agency has renewed its ambitions for Venus missions. Venera D is an upcoming joint mission between Roscosmos and NASA to explore the atmosphere and surface of Venus. The abbreviation Venera D stands for Venera in Russian. It is expected to launch in the late 2020s or early 2030s and aims to study the planet's atmosphere, geological history, and search for signs of any current or past habitability. The spacecraft will include an orbiter, a lander, and possibly an inflatable to study the planet's atmosphere thoroughly. The legacy of the Venera missions extends far beyond their technical accomplishments and global implications. These missions, started by the Soviet Union during the height of the Cold War, represented a pinnacle of human imagination and determination in exploring the universe. Despite facing numerous challenges and obstacles, the Soviets persevered in their quest to unveil the secrets of Venus, a planet long believed to be hostile and unwelcoming to life. One of the most crucial aspects of the Venera missions was their pioneering use of mechanical probes to study planetary atmospheres and surfaces. These missions paved the way for future exploration beyond Earth's neighborhood and laid the groundwork for our understanding of planetary science. The data gathered by the Venera spacecraft provided valuable insights into Venus' extreme environment, including its searing temperatures, crushing atmospheric pressure, and toxic atmosphere dominated by carbon dioxide. Moreover, the technological advances achieved through the Venera program had broader implications for space exploration. The development of robust heat-resistant materials, reliable communication systems, and dependable landing techniques were crucial milestones that contributed to subsequent missions to other planets like Mars and beyond. The lessons learned from the Venera missions continue to inform spacecraft design and operational strategies in contemporary space exploration endeavors. Beyond their scientific and technological significance, the Venera missions also had important social and political implications during the space race era. These missions symbolized the competition between superpowers for dominance in space exploration. For the Soviet Union, succeeding in the Venera missions was not only about scientific discovery but also about demonstrating technological prowess and ideological superiority over the United States. The global community closely watched each Venera mission, 
recognizing their significance in expanding humanity's understanding of the solar system. The successful soft landing of Venera 7 on Venus in 1970 marked a major milestone as the first spacecraft to transmit data from another planet's surface. This achievement highlighted the Soviet Union's ability to overcome the tremendous challenges posed by Venus' harsh conditions. In addition to scientific instruments, the Venera spacecraft carried cameras that captured the first close-up images of Venus' surface. These images revealed a rugged landscape dominated by rocky plains and volcanic features, providing scientists with crucial geological insights into the planet's history and evolution. The panoramic photos taken by later missions, such as Venera 13 and 14, further enhanced our understanding of Venus' surface morphology and composition. Despite their successes, the Venera missions also faced their share of failures and challenges. Some missions either failed to reach Venus or experienced technical glitches that prevented them from transmitting data back to Earth. The difficulties of operating in Venus' hostile environment, including extreme temperatures exceeding 450 degrees Celsius 842 degrees Fahrenheit and corrosive sulfuric acid clouds, presented significant engineering challenges for spacecraft design and operation. Nevertheless, the determination and dedication of Soviet scientists and engineers involved in the Venera program paved the way for future missions to Venus and other celestial bodies. The legacy of the Venera missions lives on in the ongoing exploration of Venus by space agencies around the world, including NASA's upcoming Venerity mission in collaboration with Roscosmos. Looking ahead, the Venerity mission aims to build upon the accomplishments of its predecessors by deploying advanced instruments to study Venus' atmosphere, surface geology, and potential signs of past or present habitability. The mission represents a collaborative effort to unravel the remaining mysteries of Earth's closest planetary neighbor and to expand our understanding of the conditions that could support life beyond our own planet.